Hi, welcome to today's video about nanocones for single atomic microscopy and quantum corals. Uh, these are pictures of uh, na carbon nanocones from a scanning electron microscopy. Uh, one way to make uh, nanocones is uh, by the Kwerner process, which is a pyrolysis of heavy oil at 1600 degrees Celsius. The maximum yield of the nanocones is about 20%. Then you get 70% carbon disks and 10% uh, carbon black, which is a pigment. This is a model of the carbon nanocone. These are sp2 hybridized carbon atoms, like in graphite and graphene. This is a conjugated pi electron system. At the tip you have uh, pentagons instead of hexagons, because uh, with hexagons it uh, would not work. And uh, nanocone has an apex angle of uh, 39 degrees, and the wall thickness is uh, 10 to 80 nanometers. Uh, this is uh, an occurrence of uh, nanocones in graphite. Uh, natural graphite contains nanocarbon nanocones. This is the occurrence of the apex angles at the, the y axis and at, at the x axis, the apex angles. And you can see uh, common angles are 39 degrees, 60 degrees, 84 degrees. This is uh, pictures of a carbon nanocone on a gold nanotip, which was made by chemical etching. Uh, this gives the gold nanotip uh, enhanced uh, mechanical stability, and uh, these nanocones have a potential for uh, nano antennas. This is an animation of the carbon nanocone on a silicon substrate, the encapsulation process of the gold nanotip, which is here in dark blue. Uh, this combination of the mechanical stability of the carbon nanocone combined with the high conductivity and chemical stability of the gold atoms and gives you an optimum uh, nanocone. This is uh, an overview of um, atomic force microscopy AFM. This is uh, scanning at atomic level. Uh, you can see here uh, PZT, that's uh, Let's conate titanate. This in green is the sample. We have here a cantilever with the tip. As the tip moves um, along the sample, the cantilever goes up and down. This is detected by the laser beam. Then you need a photodiode and detector. So you can scan with this apparatus, you can scan an atomic level. This is a picture of atomic force uh, microscope image. Uh, it's a 42 micrometer by 42 micrometer scan. Magnetic domains in a ferrite garnet film. That's lutetium, bismuth, iron oxide. And you can see the branching of the domain structure. This interesting uh, mo molecule, hexabenzocoronine. Um, this is uh, an image of a non contact atomic force microscopy. It's a functionalized tip, a carbon monoxide functionalized tip. And what's very interesting is here you can see it has different uh, lengths of the carbon carbon bonds. And this compound hexabenzocoronin and its, de its derivatives are very interesting because of one feature they have self assembly properties. This is uh, another image of uh, atomic force microscope lithography. These are hard symbols on an atomic scale. Uh, with this method you can uh, reach resolutions below 10 nanometers. Uh, this is an uh, example of uh, nano romance. Uh, these are single volt carbon nano horns, SWCNHs. Their height is about 40 to 50 nanometers, which is much bigger than the diameter, which is about 2 to 3 nanometers. They were described in 1999 by Japanese physicist, physicist Azumiyo Iijima, and they can be synthesized from graphite by CO2 laser ablation. And carbon nanohorns can aggregate, um, then you get a pore structure, and you can make into the nanohorns uh, nano windows. These were first produced in the year 2002 by high temperature oxidation. Uh, with oxygen. 
Uh, these compounds have a big potential for biosensors, uh, for gas storage, and as catalysts. This is a picture of black silicon. This is a dark surface modification of silicon with needle surface structure. It has a very low reflectivity of 5%. You want that for solar cells. This is a scanning electron microscope image of spikes that were made by laser irradiation. irradiation. And you can reach a higher absorption by epitaxial growth of magnesium silicide on these silicon nanocores. This is another picture of black silicon with slanted nanocones from oblique angled reactive iron etching. You can place up to 1 million needles per square millimeter. Uh, these uh, nanocones have a potential application in the semiconductor technology. This is another nanocone picture of zinc oxide, uh, again with needles, needles and nanocones. Uh, they can be made um, with the method chemical vapor deposition. And these compounds are very interesting for solar cells, batteries, and biosensors. This is another compound, the gallium arsenide. This is a wafer of uh, GAAS. Another compound for uh, semiconductors and solar cells. And nanocones of epitaxially grown uh, aluminium gallium arsenide were used for efficiency optimization. For these are type of nanocones, optimal tilt angle is 5 to 7 degrees. The nanocones and the optimal thickness is 8 to 9 nanometers. There's another version of inverted nanocones and hourglass structures. These are also very promising. For example, they have a very good uh, properties with uh, lights from different angles. And this is called the well. Um, it is a quantum corel. This is a sculpture in gilded wood from the year 2009 by Julian Foss Andreae. Uh, quantum mirage is the result of quantum chaos. Quantum chaos is the relationship between quantum mechanics and classical chaos. This is an elliptical quantum corel, which was built using an autonomous atom assembler. These are cobalt atoms on copper. Uh, these quantum corels are very interesting because they are artificial atoms. They have atom-like uh, properties. For example, they can make bonds. And the surface electrons can be trapped inside the quantum corel. And this is a very nice uh, painting. It's uh, the cone of Montmorency Falls in Quebec, made by James Patterson Cockburn. It's a painting from the years 1826 to 1832. A very nice painting. And that was today's video about nanocones for single microscopy and quantum corels. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye bye.